wasn't until the 70s that African American families were able to see a family on TV that we can that we could relate to, and that was an urban family out of Chicago, and the name of the show was Good Times. And I speak about good times all the time when I'm speaking to particularly African-American fathers um, growing up in the 70s where for the most part, and I use me as an example, um, growing up in a household without a father, seeing him on television, James Evans was my father. He was this example and model of an entity, a thing that was supposed to be in my family that did not exist, yet he showed up on my television screen every Friday night and his family looked like mine, his living situation looked like mine. The things that they talked about were the things that I heard in my household. You know, and after three seasons of Good Times when um, James Evans um, passed away and left the show. For many African American males in my community, our fathers died that day. There really isn't much of a relationship with my father. You know, as growing up as a young man, my mom was uh, the world to me, and he was really not in the picture at all. I had a great opinion. Yeah. I had a great example. He was the prototype, you know, as far as what I feel, you know, where he came from, because his father wasn't there like that. So, you know, for a man that, you know, basically raised himself and raised, you know, his, his other family, his siblings, and to become the man that he was, you know, I, I can't ask for anything else. And as I've gotten older, um, I've kind of, understood that he had some issues that probably it was a good thing that he wasn't around. My father was murdered when I was eight years old. And, but from what I remember, you know, uh, I was the happiest little boy in the world, you know what I mean? Until I lost my father, you know? And that's what I'm doing my best to duplicate with my children, is to make them feel the way I felt before I lost them, you know? Uh, my father, he was, he was everything. He wasn't there all the time, but when he does, it made such a great impact right. on my life. And, you know, I realized later on why, you know, because at one, at, for years it hurt me. Because I'm just a smaller version of my father. He's about 6'4", but I look just like him, you know. And um, I used to stare in the mirror, and I used to cry, and just wonder why, you know, he won't come get me. I wonder why he didn't want to spend time with me. There was an even period of time where I blamed myself. Um, I was fortunate actually to have my father in my life. Um, mm -hmm. We still speak. I'm actually probably going to see him around Father's Day or maybe a couple of days before. My little brother is graduating from junior high school, so I'm going to go down to New Jersey to where they stay. My father, can I describe my dad? He was, he was like, he was there for me. And I mean, he, he was there, but then sometimes when he was there, he wasn't there. And maybe because of his job or because of how tired he, he it may have been, but sometimes he was he was right there, like on the couch watching TV. My mom used to get on him all the time. Take your son out and do something. But one thing that I learned about my father was the fact that um, he had a really tough. And I found this out just a couple of years ago. One Christmas, we had a chance to talk, and he had a really tough because I mean, for one, his father was murdered when I was a baby, so I never knew my grandfather. My dad did the best he could. And like this brother was saying here, from his nature, I don't think sometimes he knew how to deal with it. And I'm gonna be honest, there was times where I felt uncomfortable. I never could tell my dad I loved him. I didn't know how. And I didn't figure he didn't, he didn't know how. But me and my dad, we got a close, before he passed away, I made a commitment to myself to let this man know that I loved, that I loved him. And I told him that, and, and while he was on his deathbed, he was real sick, we got to be together. I regret nothing that that man didn't do for me. I, I learned a lot from him. There's things that I didn't learn from him that he taught me without even knowing. And just, I have no regrets. How that plays in the relationship to my daughters, I want to be the father to them that I never had. Now, I've had that example. Now, what I'm going to do is try to tweak it, you know, it's like 09 version, 89 version of a vehicle. 
you know. Oh yeah, it was a nice car, but you know, there's a couple things that we could have did better, worked the bugs out. So that's where I come in. So if I'm like fortunate enough and blessed enough to be in that situation, that's where I got to.